Black holes mm. are black. That's it. That's why they're called black holes. Right? How can you argue with that? Yeah. It has the, the name. It has black right in it. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, it's black. Yep, the black bodies, right? So it's, let me ask you, if you think black holes are black, what does it mean to you that something is black? It means the absence of light. It means the absence of color. I would agree with this. Yeah. This is a good idea, right? If black holes are black, that would mean that no light of any type comes out of them. And this makes sense, right? Because that's kind of the definition of black hole, right? It's something where you have so much mass, so much energy, so much matter in such a small region of space that even if you moved at the speed of light, there would be a region that you can't escape from. And therefore, of course, a black hole would be black, right? It has an event horizon, and nothing can escape from it. Except, let me ask you, if you fell into a black hole, what would someone outside who watched you fall in see? If you fall in, you don't notice anything weird happening, right? You fall in and you're like, oh, space is getting distorted, this is weird, and you cross the event horizon and you don't notice anything special happening. But you know that anything you do, once you cross that event horizon, will never get out. But for someone outside, they will never see you disappear. When you cross that event horizon, what happens? Well, you know around a black hole, space is super curved. So what that means is when you see something fall in, because it's super curved, space is distorted and time slows down. So from outside this black hole, you will see something fall in, and it won't reach a barrier and disappear. It won't cross over and disappear. Instead, it works like, do you know what an asymptote is? Where, you remember this word, some of you? You have an asymptote, where if you have something, you can approach it, and you can get closer and closer and closer, but you never quite reach it. Right? In America, we joke, if you go to college, this is like your student loans. You can pay, you pay, you pay, <laughs> but You'll you never always pay. <laughs> so that's an asymptote? You would so call that what low? happens is yeah. when you see something go into a black hole, it gets fainter, it gets redder, because the wavelength of the light stretches. The wavelength of a light is what determines its color, its energy. So it goes to longer wavelengths, and it gets smeared out in space around the event horizon, but it never disappears. So if you fall into a black hole and I watch you fall in, if I build a large enough telescope with the right wavelength and I build it large enough so I collect enough light, I will always be able to see you, always indefinitely far into the future. There's always light that comes there from anything that falls in. That doesn't sound black to me, but it gets better. Better for my side, worse for this side. And it gets worse because over time, space is curved around a black hole. And that strong curvature means that this black hole will emit radiation mm -hmm. over time. This is called Hawking radiation. Stephen Hawking, famous physicist who died last year, he, this is what I would consider his most fa famous, most compelling dis discovery. That you have these objects, black holes in space, and if you work out, you know, we know space is not empty. Even empty space is not empty. If I were to take a big box and I were to take all the matter out of it, and I were to take all the energy out of it, and all the fields I would set to zero inside, there's still energy in there. Empty space is not empty because you cannot get rid of quantum fields. Quantum fields are everywhere in space. There's always an electromagnetic field. There's always the field of the strong force. All these forces, they exist. And when space is curved, you have a gravitational field too. Whenever you have this strong region of curvature, you automatically produce radiation. And this is weird, this is not what you expect, but the bigger and more massive your black hole is, the slower it emits radiation. So as your black hole emits energy and loses mass, it shrinks, and the smaller it gets, the faster 
it emits radiation and evaporates. So all the time, even when things are falling in, even when a black hole is growing, it's emitting this radiation. Now think about how weird this is. This means when you look at a black hole from the outside, the brightest things you see are the most recent things that fell in, because that's what it has the light that's the least shifted and the least, you know, the least far along on that asymptote. And as time goes on, that evaporates and you start seeing the next thing previously that fell in. So it's almost like a black hole gets rid of its energy in reverse order of when it absorbed it. It takes a super long time, much, much longer than the universe has been around for, for black holes to evaporate. But the big lesson that I want everyone to take away is even if you took the blackest black hole that could ever exist in the universe, if you built a large enough telescope with the right size, the right wavelength, and the right camera, you would always be able to see that it is not black. There is always light coming from a black hole. Ethan, what do you think? I, I, the thing is, is that I have to kind of admit, you convinced me. Uh oh. Black holes are not black. In fact, I looked online and I saw some of the most compelling images that we've seen maybe to date were recently taken where we actually see the exact light and the Hawking radiation you're talking about kind of outlining them. Is that what you, that's well, what you that's, mean? Well, that's something that's separate. That light is a different kind of light because that is not light coming out of the black hole, mm -hmm. that's light coming from the matter around right. the black uh -huh. hole. So that's a difference that maybe is related to, I think, a different myth Ooh. that people talk about. See? So See who you've got a problem with here? I don't even know necessarily what myths come out of black holes, right? right. But I do know this. I'm completely convinced. Will you join me in ripping this myth down, just getting rid of this myth? Oh. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is gone, and we will crumble this myth up. Uh-oh. Yeah. And we will burn this myth. Let's see it. Yeah. <laughs> is that kind of like how it looks like coming out of a black hole? I Maybe? sure hope not. <laughs> <laughs> not so smoky. <laughs> black holes, however, I'm going to go back to this because I'm going to be very contentious with you now. Uh-oh. Black holes suck everything into them. And that, it's, it's like you said, that event horizon, there is such an amazing pull that anything that gets near that black hole just... Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, right? That's certainly the conception people have, and people have talked about how black holes suck. Let me ask you this. Does planet Earth suck? Does planet Earth well. suck everything into it? Planet Earth. Yeah, but it's not a black hole. Oh, it's not a black hole. What if it were? Let me tell you if it were. Right, right now the Earth is not a black hole. It has gravity. It has a certain amount of gravity based on the mass of planet Earth. Right, some 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. We're, we're pretty massive. It's massive enough that with all the energy and all the power in my legs, I can get not even one meter off the ground. Good people can get one meter off the ground. But, um, but it's hard because this gravitational force of Earth is so big. There's, there's a lot of Earth there. But the Earth is big. Most of the things that experience Earth's gravity, if they come within a certain distance of Earth, they'll collide with us. And, you know, we call that getting sucked in, right? Asteroids, meteors, things from outer space, sometimes even the satellites we launch, they get sucked into Earth. Now imagine I have a black hole, the mass of Earth. Same mass, so same gravity, except it's in a much smaller space. How small would the event horizon of planet Earth be if it were a black hole? And the answer is it would be a sphere about this big, with a radius just a little bit less than one centimeter. <laughs> so now, of all the things that could be attracted to Earth through its gravity, you think about all the things that would hit planet Earth the way it is and all the things that would miss. Now imagine you've shrunk planet Earth down and it's this big, and it has the same gravity. Will it suck in more things or less things than when it was 12,000 kilometers in diameter? I'm assuming it would 
less. Yeah. See, you have this conception that black holes are like vacuum cleaners, right. that they suck everything in around them. But black holes are more like the cookie monster from Sesame Street. Mm. Right? <laughs> They're om, dom, 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 dom. Matter gets close to it, it gets accelerated, but most of it doesn't hit that event horizon. Most of it just feels the gravity, comes in, accelerates, slingshots, and gets kicked out. Black holes are extremely messy eaters. And if you go and calculate when something falls in near a black hole, what happens to most of the mass? The answer is almost all of the mass gets accelerated and ejected. When you see that famous image of a black hole, that is the matter from outside getting accelerated. Mm. And we actually measure that most of this matter does not get sucked into the black hole, but gets accelerated around it, emits radiation, and gets spit out in these enormous jets, because it never crosses the event horizon. If you take nothing else away from the idea that black holes suck everything into them, it's that they attract everything to them, but most of the matter does not fall in, it gets spit back out. Black holes are messy eaters. They are like babies with cucumbers on their foreheads <laughs> and spaghetti sauce on their face. They do not get most of the food in their mouth. Yeah. I, I have to be honest, I have three kids. I've seen the image you're talking about. I'm completely convinced that you're right. This cannot be true. Black holes do not suck everything into them. You've convinced me. However, oh, we've, we've got, got one more. We've got one more. We're going to oh, burn no. this myth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one day, black holes will consume our universe. So yes, they're messy eaters. Yes, they suck and spin things out. Yes, they're like Cookie Monster with no throat and the cookies don't go anywhere. They just fall all over the floor. But eventually, in this immense infinite of time, every single thing comes home to roost. Okay, and I understand why you'd think this, right? It makes a lot of sense. We've recently discovered, thanks to the LIGO gravitational wave detector and the Virgo gravitational wave detector here in Europe, we've discovered that when two masses orbit each other, the orbiting one will radiate energy away and spiral in and eventually merge. And it's true. Every galaxy, every large galaxy, including our own, has a massive or supermassive black hole at the center. So you say, all you have to do is wait. And if you wait long enough, what's going to happen? All of these stars will radiate away and spiral in and merge. And then everywhere in the universe where you have galaxies, everything in them gets eaten by a black hole. And this is a good idea, unless something else happens first. What else do you have in a galaxy? If a galaxy were just one big black hole at the center and one star, yep, that's what would happen. Black holes would eventually consume that star. In fact, if we were to take just the sun and the Earth, we know in about 10 to the 26 years, the Earth would radiate all its energy away and spiral into the sun. 10 to the 26 is a long time, that's a lot of zeros, but eventually it would happen. Well, guess what? In our galaxy, we don't just have our sun or one star and a black hole. We have hundreds of billions of stars. What happens when you have many different masses all orbiting something at the center? They can interact with each other, too. So what happens if I have two masses orbiting a large one? They will interact with each other. When they pass by, they can exchange energy because they push and pull on each other. In general, what happens is you will have things of two different masses orbiting a much larger one. The smaller mass gets kicked faster, and the larger mass gets kicked slower. So what this means over enough time, this is a fun physics word for anyone who wants a nice little oxymoron. We call this process violent relaxation. <laughs> violent because the small masses get kicked so hard, they will get kicked out of the galaxy. 
they will get, reach what's their escape velocity. And relaxation, because the larger mass will lose energy and will sink towards the center. Now the thing is, this happens on much faster time scales than any in spiral happens. So if you were to run a simulation for how many stars in the galaxy will get kicked out versus how many get sucked into the black hole at the center, over 99% get kicked out. So if you want to say black holes will consume our universe, I could say, yeah, they'll consume some of our universe, but not most of it, not even 1% of it. Most things that exist in the universe, most stars, planets, star systems, they will actually get ejected. In fact, this is such a severe problem that when we simulate how did our solar system form, it's almost impossible to make a solar system that started with eight planets that ends with eight planets. It is almost certain that at some point, billions of years ago, we had nine, ten or more planets. And not like little guys that we called planets, but big like probably there was at least a fifth gas giant. Probably there were more planets in the inner solar system. And all we see today are the survivors. So not only will black holes only consume a tiny part of the universe, but there are these rogue, homeless, orphaned planets and stars and failed stars that have been kicked out of solar systems, kicked out of galaxies, and are just flying through the universe long, long past where their home was. Wow. What do you think? Do you still think black holes will consume our universe? I just didn't understand that they were such selective eaters. You know... I, I, I have to be honest. They're know, a lot pickier than I thought. You have to get lucky to get eaten by a black hole. <laughs> so I have to say... a certain definition of luck. This myth is burned. Ethan, very convincing stuff. Uh, this myth goes up in flames. Yeah! Along with the other three. I thought that was fantastic. I really appreciate that. It was so compelling and so exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, so one of the greats in the industry, Ethan Siegel <laughs> here for you all. Thank you. Give him a wonderful round of applause. That was superb.